Hi, I'm Liam from Gigabyte Marketing, and today I want to share with you some of our cooling solutions that are changing in the data center. We've already seen traditional air cooling, but now we're going to look at direct liquid cooling and immersion cooling. So starting on this side here, we are looking at one of our high density servers, which means there are four nodes, each of them has two sockets, so this 2U system supports eight CPUs. And in this case, it's an AMD Epic. So you can support up to 280 watts per socket, which is a lot of heat that gets generated. So to deal with that heat, which is becoming a big challenge now, is of course to have a strong fan wall. But in this case, we have to remove drives so we can improve the airflow to go through the system. So yes, you can hit peak performance, but you gotta cut back something. So if you don't wanna do that, and you have an infrastructure to handle liquid cooling, you can look at direct liquid cooling. And this is one of our examples. It's the same server that we just looked at over here. The only difference is that each node is cooled. The CPU is cooled, the memory is cooled, and so is NVIDIA Mellanox in the back. All of it is cooled in each node. And then you can see it, because of that solution where all the heat is being removed there, we don't need to have as many fans. And at the same time, we can still have even more NVMe drives possible. So going from here to here, we also can improve efficiency. So we're, it's, it's considered more green. We're, we're generating less wasted energy. Then when we move over here, we're going away from CPUs only to CPU and GPU. Down at the bottom here, we have a liquid cooled NVIDIA HGX A100 eight GPUs. And then on top of that, we have a one U system that houses the memory, also the processors. As a total, this consumes over 4,000 watts. So that's why for 4,000 watts, if you want peak performance, you want efficiency, you choose a solution like this that uses a CDU and other cooling technology. And the last one I wanna share over here is our immersion cooling. Now in this diagram, we're looking at single phase immersion cooling, which means cool liquid is come into our tank here while the server is completely submerged. The warm liquid is pulled out, cooled and brought back into the system. But choosing this kind of route also makes some modifications necessary. You need to remove all the heat sinks because they're not needed. And you want the closest contact between the liquid and the hot component. And the same thing here, no longer do we need fans because there's no need for it. But this solution is very attractive because of the efficiency. This has been demonstrated to be the most efficient system you can use, immersion cooling is. So why do we have these different options? Because some people want to invest in this kind of technology. Some people have more interest in this, whereas people are used to traditional rack. But going forward in the future, we know we're going to have to start moving to other solutions like these. So thanks for taking your time today to learn about Gigabyte's cooling.